All right. First of all, thank you for watching this video lecture. My name is Christian Felsnes. I'm an artist living and working in Berlin. And I would like to talk a little bit about my practice. For the past 15 years, I have been doing performances in which the audience plays an integral role. You could say that I work with the audience as artistic material. When I started out, I mostly used myself, my body and my identity to create images or situations in front of the audience. But at a certain point, I started to have ideas for more complex choreographies that required larger groups of people to participate. So I had the idea of integrating the audience into that choreography. And when I started to experiment with making people part of the work, I quite quickly realized that it was not enough for me to have an idea of what I want them to do. I also needed a strategy for how to persuade them. And I realized that the interactions that took place between me and the viewers when I tried to persuade them to participate was actually more interesting than the choreographies I had thought out. So I started to make that interaction the center of my practice. And as I continued to explore that interaction and try to push it even further, see how far I can take the audience, the more I was being confronted with questions related to power, manipulation, hierarchy and social conventions. I knew that I was entering a very problematic field, but at the same time I felt that there was a blind spot that I needed to address. We often think about community-based art, social projects, participatory performances and so on as something fundamentally democratic, something that tears down hierarchies. But what I realized through my own practice was that in order to be able to make people part of your art, you need to have a position of power. And my power as an artist is directly related to my position within the hierarchy of the art world. So by using that power to take control, I felt that I could highlight the aspect of authority, that I could somehow create a space where the audience can look at and react to a figure of authority through a direct experience. As an example of this approach, I would like to show an excerpt from a four channel video installation from 2013 called Masculine Demeanor as a Consequence of Social Power Relations Between Artist and Audience. For this work, I would look at and analyze all the performances I had been doing up until that point and I extracted four different authoritative roles that I would take in order to control the audience and develop one performance for each. Are you still ready? Yeah. Ah, that's good. My way around okay. this complex yeah. system so of references trying to figure all out the men where my stand would be. Say, um, uh, that's one of the things that were imminent in there and back. Another thing would be dealing with the audience. And we're going Just to talk a lot more about that tonight. Can you feel but, it? Uh, I wanted to keep on yes. working with the audience. I figured when I do something like this, there's two ah, roles. Keep the tone. There's the role of the artist and there's the role of then the all audience. The women. But both roles are equally yes. important. Yes. And both roles play a very big role. <laughs> Another work called Louder. The Whole Picture, where I would build a construction with me inside your eyes. and the audience outside. So there would be the a physical division between me and the audience, and we were divided by this wall. And then through Lose the performance, yourself. this wall was teared down. The division between the was down. And they would chop into pieces with electric sauce, and they would take all these pieces 
that was placed inside right now, an even bigger construction. Let go of your individual voices and then become one out of big that and powerful voice a new in this very moment. The street with the pieces, a structure that was not defined by me or the institution, but by the audience that would take place in that. And because I thought there was some interesting division between the inside and the outside, I would do the performance one more time in another place where we would build the construction outside, tear it down and bring it back into the institution. So of course that is on the one hand about breaking down the division and between so the audience and the right artist, but room. it's also very much about traces. Because after this whole thing, you have this new structure that is either standing inside the museum or out on the street. But that structure tells a story about something that is bigger than itself. Just like the video that we are recording right now, about the situation that we have right now, For me, it was always about displaying the mechanisms of authority, but I realized that a lot of people were conflating the techniques that I employ with my personality. So I started to develop works that did not require my own presence and that would not be about my role as an artist. I started to develop technical solutions like pre-recorded audio and wireless headphones and I started to hire performers who would act as instructors and approach and interact with viewers. I mostly work with a script or a set of rules that define a structure that allow each individual visitor to interpret and negotiate those rules in a different way. So the structure remains the same, but the performance is always different because it's always different bodies, different people performing it. And because the bodies, identities and behavior of the visitors is the main material and subject matter of the work, it also always have a relevance directly related to the place it's shown. One example of this strategy is a work from 2017 called Feed. Feed consists of a dark room where there's always a camera team present, a director and a camera operator. On the camera there is a headlight and the camera is connected to a video projection that always shows the live feed from the camera. And as soon as a visitor enters the room, the director immediately starts to give instructions on how to perform in front of the camera. The video projection always shows a live feed from the camera. So in a way, the piece is a video installation, but the video is never recorded. The only way to see the video is by being present in the moment of its production. Because it is ongoing and because it can be displayed multiple times in multiple different contexts, it also fundamentally adapts to the exhibition format. And within the context of an exhibition, each visitor arrives and acts as an individual. And they decide themselves where to go, what to look at and for how long. And I believe that this particular condition of the exhibition heightens the visitor's awareness of their individual choices and responsibility. And that is one of the most important points for me to allow a moment of self-reflection, to allow the visitor to analyze themselves by experiencing themselves as art. One critique of my work that I have heard recently is that it's very white, but that's simply a reflection of the European institutions in which my work is mostly shown. Whenever my works are shown in a different context, they automatically adapt to reflect that context because the audience is different. By delegating the performance to the visitors, I decide that the people attending the venue where the piece is being shown represent the bodies displayed in the piece. My work deals with the consequence of using other people as artistic material and 
I mostly focus on the relation between artist and viewer, but I realized that another blind spot for me was the relation between artist and hired performer. In my most recent work, a video piece called Look at Me, I explore the relation between myself as artist and director and performer Mini Katina Mertens, who I hire to realize the work. The video shows us as we interact with each other and the public in order to stage the images for the camera that ultimately become the work. All of the scenes were filmed in a series of live performances at different venues, such as a concert hall, a festival, an art gallery, and a film studio. They were developed in close collaboration between me and Mini and track the delegation of power and responsibility from artist to performer. I would like to end this lecture by showing an excerpt from Look at Me. Thank you very much for watching. I want every single one in this room to look at me. Just look at me. Just stand still and look at me.